let's get going. All right, game number one for the national semifinals at the Final Four is Purdue and NC State. This maintains a nine-point spread on Friday. We've been talking about this all week. It's been somewhere since midweek around eight and a half or nine. The Bet US line has it at nine on Friday, total 146 and a half. Okay, Kyle Hunter to you. Begin the handicapping, including do we have an educated thought that perhaps this line will go up later today, later tonight with money coming in on Purdue because it did open at what, 12, even 12 and a half some places. It's come down. There's some thought like an elevator. It might go back up a little bit. Kyle, some thoughts and some handicapping. I don't think it'll go back up a lot, but I think it could bump up just a little bit, uh, you know, maybe nine and a half or something, but 12 was too many um, the way NC State's been playing. Uh, this is, like we said yesterday, one of the craziest runs I've ever seen from NC State. The fact that they were where they were, get to this point, insane. Um, I think Diara could be the most important player to NC State in this game because he has to guard Edie with his length. He's been in a lot of foul trouble of late. We know Edie can draw the fouls for sure. And I think that, uh, you know, while some people might not want to hear it, Edie is really good at not committing fouls by dropping off, not contesting every single shot. It's not just the refs. Uh, you know, Edie is doing a really good job. He's not aggressive on defense. They give the ball to him every single time on offense. He just gets defensive rebounds down there. Um, uh, the drop defense has really mitigated his foul trouble. Um, I think it's great strategy from Matt Painter. You know, some coaches, when they have a big guy like that, they go away from it too much. They've been giving him the ball every single time on offense, and who can blame them? Uh, they shoot 41% from three-point range for the year. Uh, can they hit the open threes against NC State? Because nobody else has been able to. Um, like we said yesterday, 24.49% from three for opponents in the last five games. Um, you know, the 10th best defense in the country this year allowed opponents to shoot 30% from three. So they're 24.49%. They're, they would be the top defense in the country. Um, NC State has won six straight games. Shot quality is expected scores based on the quality of shots. They would have lost five of those six games. So it's interesting, uh, you know, how have they gotten here? There's obviously some luck. You have to give them credit as well. I lean Purdue in this one, uh, thinking Purdue is just a much better team. I'm curious about the tempo uh, because Keats has pressed, pushed the pace sometimes in the past. I will say I have one play on this game, and it's going to be a prop. I know Corby likes this one too. I heard your guys' show earlier this week. I bet three of these props early in the week when I heard that Corby liked this one, too. I was excited because I know he's sharp on this type of thing. Um, Edie over one and a half assists. They have to double him, right? They have to make him kick it out sometimes. I don't think they can just uh, let him work down there. And if the refs are a bit slower to call fouls, which I think they might be, then uh, they can be really physical with him. He kicks it out to lawyer, uh, Braden Smith, somebody like that. They knock down a shot. He has 13 of his last 16 games. He has over one and a half assists. Um, you know, so this is a guy who has consistently at least gotten a couple assists. You're laying some juice here. But with me not loving the game being at nine and the total at 146, 146 and a half, uh, I think over assist here is the best play. NC State 155th and open three rate allowed. I'm betting that Purdue will knock down some of those shots. All right, interesting, Corby. You were all over that on the kickouts out of the low block for the three-pointers earlier in the week. So Kyle's got an official play on that. We'll lock it in here in a couple of moments. Uh, again, we've debated this and discussed this. Do they play in front of him? Do they double-team him? I mean, it's going to be probably the biggest um, component to the first half of this game, especially. How does NC State elect to play Zach Eady down low? Some thoughts? Here on this, might you have an official play on this game? Let's see. What do you think, Corby, about Purdue NC State? Yeah, a couple of things. I took four plus assists plus five hundred. Uh, we talked about that on the show for a minute. Uh, it is down to four hundred, so I, I think that's a great price. I I really like this ED over one and a half assists. I agree that the thing that is going to make this different than what every other time that they've seen is um, DJ Horn likes to press basically three quarter court. If if somebody's bringing the ball to the court, he likes to be. On his hip, um, and if you make that pass harder for Ed, like Braden Smith had 15 assists in the game, like that's because you're just allowing him to toss the ball in. Uh, if you make that press, I think it's going to be harder for him to get the ball. But no, I bet uh, Diara under rebounds, 10 and a half rebounds, minus 24 mm -hmm. on the show. I think that was Monday um, or Wednesday. And somebody brings up in the chat, uh, it's kind of one of the main reasons that I bet this. And I, I didn't really care to talk about it, uh, but I brought it up, and so we'll bring it up on Friday. But uh, 
Ramadan ends the ninth, and um, Diara does celebrate. So we saw him coming in and out of the game uh, quite often. The issue is, I think that they have enough bodies to throw at, uh, at everyone that they've played. That that really hasn't been an issue. Middlebrook came in; he's he stepped up a lot. Uh, DJ Burns, obviously, the America's pastime. Um, everyone loves him at this point. I saw that he was mm-hmm. on uh, Barstool's show the other day, but uh, I, I think with him coming in and out and having to body now against Zach Eady, who, if he does get the ball is an absolute menace. It wouldn't surprise me if DR gets in foul trouble. Uh, ten and a half assist, uh, rebounds seems like a ton. But I do fully agree. Uh, the Zach Eady assist single, it's kind of juicy, but um, it looks like a good one. And again, on the Ramadan point, the the uh, Muslim holiday, he is fasting sun up to sundown. And so in terms of nutrition, in terms of hydration, but they've been dealing with this throughout March while it's been going on uh, with him. So you gave some thoughts there on his prop in particular. Um, yeah, and, and you're bringing up foul trouble as well. The, I mean, Tennessee gave a lot of fouls last week and had all kinds of foul trouble in the Midwest Regional Final with Purdue. And we see Kyle's thoughts there in the live chats going back and forth about this. Uh, I just I wonder if Purdue is going to play tight in this game. I keep waffling back and forth about taking those points. I just don't think it's enough. If th- if this was like ten or ten and a half, I might be more inclined uh, here in this situation with NC State to take the points. But I could totally see Purdue starting to play tight, missing shots if it's a close game because obviously all the pressure is on them. Uh, again, we'll lock Kyle Hunter in. His play is over one and a half assists with Zach Eady from earlier in the week. You see Corby on the screen did play Mohamed Diara under 10 and a half rebounds for the game. He's an outstanding rebounder, but he doesn't believe he's going to get as much. And maybe as you explained, foul trouble is a part of that, too, in terms of playing time. So those are two official plays from the guys right here on game number one. Again, Purdue looking to get in the national championship game when they were last at the Final Four in 1980, beaten in the semifinal by UCLA. NC State obviously won the whole thing three years later in 1983. But again, none of the players on these teams were around for any of that, obviously. And so a lot of the fan bases have been starved. Purdue, NC State waiting for another opportunity. Somebody is in the championship game Monday night for Purdue out of the Big Ten. And the upstart 11 seed NC State with nine straight postseason wins. Does that magic continue? All right. Thank you for finding us. Hit the like button. I see the live audience growing and growing. We'll we'll have some time for some questions. (laughs) 